photo editing is pretty easy most of the times. But every now and then you come across an image that's super hard to work on and you spend several days trying to get it to look good. Like in this case. On location everything looked perfect. There were colorful clouds, a nice subject and a pretty foreground. But once I tried working on it, it took ages to find the right post-processing approach. And that got me thinking, maybe I'm so used to my workflow that I'm just not able to get all the potential out of this raw file. So my suggestion is, before you continue watching me work on this image, grab the raw file from the link in the description, then try edit it with your vision in mind and then post the results in the comments. I think by getting several completely different versions of the same image, there will be a lot to learn. With that being said, I will now continue this video by editing the raw file. So make sure to first edit the image yourself, then continue with the video. So in the end, what really helped here was to basically skip the basic adjustments. I did change the profile, so let's do that real quick. I'm going to change it from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. And the reason behind that is because I want to have more saturation on the base image. But besides that, I didn't change the white balance because I think the colors look great with those warm highlights and those dark cold clouds up in the sky. I also added a little bit of texture, giving this image some more sharpness. At the same time, I'm going to bring down the clarity and the haze to give this image a soft glowing look. But besides this, I did not change anything in regards to the tones of the image because the two most important areas of the image, the sky and the foreground need to be treated differently. And that's very, very important for this image to not do global adjustments like that. So what I'm going to do next is let's open up the masking panel. And right away, we want to start working on the sky. In this case, it's really helpful to just use the sky selection mask because we have a clear, nice edge between foreground and sky. You can see that Lightroom does do a great job at selecting the sky. The first problem with the sky is it's way too bright and we are losing details in the clouds. To fix that, I'm going to bring down the exposure quite a bit. And this way we can see way more of that nice cloud structure. So somewhere around here looks pretty good to me. Then I'm also going to bring up the temperature, introducing just a little more golden light up in the sky. And I'm also going to increase the tint slightly because there is a very subtle green color cast up there, which I really don't like. So increasing the tint will help us get rid of that. Then let's quickly work on the foreground for a moment. I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm going to create a very soft edge starting from the very bottom of the image and going up like this. On location, the foreground did look pretty interesting, but looking at this image, it's kind of boring. I don't know, the field doesn't look as expected to me. So what I wanna do is I wanna get less attention on the foreground and I'm doing this by adding some kind of vignetting effect on it. So what I want to do is to bring down the exposure, making the very near foreground quite a bit darker. So just like that. At the same time, I want to prevent underexposure. So I want to bring up the shadows just a little bit. I'm also going to bring up the blacks just to be safe. I have a feeling it's looking a little bit too cold. So what I want to do is to bring up the temperature just a little bit as well. And what's really important for the foreground is it's very, very vibrant, which I don't like. I want the sky to be vibrant, but not the landscape. So I'm going to start working on the saturation here. So let's bring it down a notch. Okay. Now what I also have in mind for this image is to have a kind of glowing horizon. What I mean by that is I want the bottom part of the horizon, especially back there the sky to be much, much brighter. Like the sunlight is coming right from behind the hill. I'm going to create this effect by using a radial gradient and I'm covering pretty much all of the horizon like this. I'm going to place the center of this radial gradient outside the image. Let's maybe make it a little thinner and a little wider to really cover all the image like that. 
I'm going to start by bringing up the whites. This helps tremendously with that bright effect in the sky. I want to further improve that by bringing up the blacks, which adds a little bit of glow on the foreground. For the same effect, we can bring up the shadows. And what we can do as well is to add some more color in this area. So we can make use of the temperature slider, bring it up and just make it warmer. That looks wonderful. We can also add a little bit of dehaze to make this glow effect stronger. So let's bring down the dehaze. I'm going to drop it quite a bit because I like what it's doing to the foreground. So somewhere around here looks really, really good to me. And at this point, the highlights might be a bit too strong. So just a bit. We can fix it by bringing down the highlight slider. And let's see what happens here. I think right around here is a good spot. That helps to keep the details right in this area. So the clouds will be nicely visible. So I want to continue and I want to work on the clouds. To be more precise, I want to work on the dark blue clouds. Therefore, we want to create a new mask. We want to choose color range. And let's just click somewhere in the blue area of the sky right here. You can see that's a pretty good selection. Let's maybe bring down the refine slider just to narrow it down a bit. And then we can add more punch to the sky by making especially those dark blue clouds darker, almost like burning the image. So let's bring down the exposure and you can see how we can add some really nice contrast this way. I can also bring up the contrast just a little bit to increase this effect. Wonderful. We can also work on those bright yellow clouds. So again, let's create a new mask, choose color range mask once more, and I'm clicking right in here. Looks like a perfect selection to me. What I want to do here is to further improve that golden light. I'm going to bring up the temperature for that, which will give those clouds a more intense yellowish look. Just like this. I think we can also bring up the texture, which will make these streaks just a little more visible. So I'm going to bring up the texture quite a bit here. I think that's a great effect to add on top. Okay, now let me create one more radial gradient and I'm covering pretty much the brightest part right around here. And I'm making sure this radial gradient is overlapping the landscape in the foreground because I want to improve the glow effect from before. And we can do that pretty easily by bringing up the blacks just a little bit like that. And we can use negative dehaze again to make the glow stronger. That looks awesome. All right. And I guess that's already it for the masking. I can show you the image real quick from before. That's pretty much our raw file with a changed camera profile, of course. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. As usual with the masking, that's a huge transformation. So at this point, we can do a little bit of color grading. Let's go ahead and open up the color mixer panel. I want to start working on the hue first, because one thing that's really, really bothering me are those green areas in the foreground. I want to make them less visible by bringing down the green hue, which in turn will make them more yellowish and bring them more in line with the weed field. So right around here looks good to me. I'm also going to bring down the yellow hue just to add a more orange tint to the sky. Much better already. Let's also head into the saturation tab. I want to bring up the orange saturation a bit. I do want to bring up yellow as well, obviously to make the sky more intense. And I want to bring down the green saturation. All right. And let's also head into the luminance tab. Here I want to bring up the green luminance all the way, which will affect the green tones in the foreground and make them kind of less visible. That's looking pretty good. I can show you the difference from before after just a bit of masking to after with the color mix applied. Especially in the sky, the colors look way better this way. Of course, we can heavily stylize this image by making use of split toning in the color grading panel. So let's open up the color grading and I want to start working on the highlights. We want to make the highlights warm up because we're already working with pretty warm highlights. So we can make the effect stronger. 
This means I'm going to set up the hue with a warm color tone somewhere around here and I'm going to bring up the saturation a lot. This is indeed some quite heavy editing, but I really like how this is looking for this image. I'm also heading into the midtones and apply pretty much the same color tone right around here. And I'm only going to bump up the saturation a little bit because I don't want to overdo it with the midtones. So right around here looks good to me. Then let's also go into the effects tab because I think we could use a bit of vignetting. So let's bring that slider down just a little bit like this. This helps guide the viewer's eye more towards the center of the image. And that's really helpful for this image. Okay, let's also open up the calibration tab. I do want to bring down the blue primary hue just around here. This kind of helps making the sky look more intense with different warmer color tones. I'm also going to bring up the saturation here like that. So that's pretty much the image after the Lightroom adjustments. We can take a look at before real quick and you can see it does look pretty good. We can apply a little bit of sharpening of course in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details. I'm going to add some masking while holding on the Alt key so we can nicely target the sharpening and let's bring up the amount of sharpening as well. Okay. So at this point, I already was quite happy, but still the foreground is bothering me with all these dark spots and this thing on the hill, still the green areas are really, really annoying. So I wanted to clean up the image and see what else I can do, but that's a little bit advanced. So we can't really do that in Lightroom. That's a reason for me to now go over to Photoshop. So right click on the image, go to edit in and edit in Photoshop. And of course, we first want to clean up the image. So I'm going to press Ctrl J to create a duplicate layer, just in case I mess something up here. Then let's grab the spot healing brush and I want to clean up those sensor spots real quick. And then I want to clean up the foreground. For that, I'm going to use the remove tool because it works quite good for things like this. I'm just going to roughly paint over this thing. And I'm also going to paint over all these black spots in the foreground. Now let's apply it and see what Photoshop is doing here. That is looking pretty good. Still, I want to get rid of those green areas. So I can try fixing the center one with the remove tool as well. Let me try to do that. All right, the foreground is still a little bit too vibrant for my taste. I'm going to create another sky selection. So let's go to select and choose sky. And then let's head into the adjustment layer menu and choose vibrance. Because of that selection, the foreground is now masked out of that vibrance adjustment layer. However, we want the sky to be masked out. So I'm going to hit control I to invert the selection. Then let's click on the vibrance adjustment layer itself and let's bring down the vibrance just a little bit to make the foreground a little less saturated. That looks perfect. Then I also want to make the whole scene a little warmer. I'm just going to the adjustment layers one more time and choose the photo filter adjustment layer, which will make everything warmer in a nice, pleasing way. Then one reason why I think the foreground might still be a little boring is because it's mostly shadows. So to change that, I'm going to apply a uh, I'm going to apply a brightness contrast adjustment layer, then invert the layer mask by hitting Ctrl I. Now go to select, choose sky, and then invert this selection by hitting Ctrl Shift I. So now we only have the foreground selected. Then we want to choose the brush by pressing B, set the foreground color to white and make the brush nice and soft. Now we're going to paint on this layer mask. And since we have an active selection, we are only going to paint on the foreground right here. I actually want to bring down the brush opacity a bit to around 25%. And now I'm just painting in a little light effect. And of course, I forgot to set up the adjustment layer. So I just want to bring up the brightness here. Let's see, that's looking better. So I set up the brightness to around 40 points and now I'm just brushing on this layer mask with the brush. 
I just want to create this light effect spilling over the mountain without affecting the very near foreground. So I think that looks great. What I want to do next is I also want to add some specific brightness to the sky in the background. So let me create another brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Let's bring up the brightness a little bit like this. And again, we only want to target a certain area of the image. So we want to go to select and select sky once more. Actually, we need to first make the layer mask black. So hit control I while selecting the layer mask and then go to select, select sky. And now with the white brush, once more, we're going to paint in right here, making this area of the sky just a little brighter. And that's it. Wonderful. So, and that's it for editing this image. I'm really looking forward to seeing all your images in the comments below. And hopefully this will have a great learning effect for every one of us. If you have any questions or want to add anything about this edit, again, feel free to write in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.